Hello, welcome back to Retro Break. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at a brand new Game Boy homebrew game called Ghostly Labyrinth. So the game I've got here was made by Jared Hansen, and he was very kind and actually sent me this copy free of charge. So just thank you so much for that, and I'm really looking forward to talking about it. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you all about the game, everything you need to know, as well as taking a look at this really unique physical release here, which actually comes in a DS style box. But before we start this video, I just have to preface it with the fact that I really admire the work that all indie developers are doing on the Game Boy and with homebrew games in general. It's just fantastic that you're all showing these old systems so much support and I really love doing videos on it as well. It's so rewarding not just to be able to talk about these games but to also give the developers of the games a chance to reach a wider audience as well. So please go and show the developers for these games all of your support, they really deserve it. So with that said, let's take a look and see what Ghostly Labyrinth's all about. So the first thing we're looking at here is the box that the game came in. As you can see, it's actually a custom-made plastic box, kind of similar to the American DS games. Inside, it's actually got a slot for the Game Boy cartridge, which I think is really cool. There's also a nice little instruction manual here with a bit of an introduction from the developer, as well as the story and some really nice character artwork as well. And here's a look at the cartridge itself, a really nice blue colour. And now let's see what the game's all about. As you can see, it's made with Game Boy Studio, in particular Game Boy Studio 2, and I was really excited to play this because this is the first full game that I've played that uses Game Boy Studio 2, and the main difference is that the first version could only make RPGs, whereas this second version can make all different kinds of genres. This one, as you can see, is a platformer. You begin outside of this cave here, and then once you walk through the cave entrance, you get blocked in, and then it's up to you to find your way through the cave in order to escape. So the game itself takes heavy inspiration from Nintendo classics like Metroid and Luigi's Mansion. The main aim of the game is just to get to the end of the cave and find your way back out into the light, but there's a lot more to do along the way. For one thing, you can take out the ghosts that you'll find using your torch, a lot like Luigi's Mansion, the torch runs out of power quite fast though, so you'll have to try and track down batteries which refill its energy. The torch has a very short range and you'll need to get very close to the ghosts in order to kill them. But when you do, that ghost will get added to a counter and if you press select at any time you can see how many ghosts you've killed as well as how many gems you've found. And that takes me on to the next part of this game, which is finding gems that are hidden throughout the cave. Now these aren't necessary to find in order to make your way out, they're just something for you to come across along the way. And when you do, they also get added to the counter. Although, I think my counter was broken because I picked up one of the gems and it said I already had six. It is a nice little diversion though, and it makes the dead ends a lot more bearable because sometimes there's treasure to find. There was a weird bug where when I reached a dead end, it came up with this text about three or four times, one after the other, before I could even move. But of course, none of these games are going to be perfect. A lot of them are the developers' first games. But I just want to say that any critiques that I do of the games, I honestly mean in a constructive way, and I really hope that you will all take my constructive feedback on board and make even more amazing games in the future. So with that being said, here's a few little things that made me a bit frustrated with the game. The first thing, as you saw there, the fact that the game is quite zoomed in and the fact that everything's quite tall means that it's very difficult to see whether you'll end up going further down the level or just end up in a pit or some lava. Luckily though, there's plenty of checkpoints and there's no real live system. So it doesn't really matter whether you die or not because you'll only be pushed back a short amount and the levels are all quite unique so it's easy enough to remember where you were and which pits to avoid and which ones to go down. Something that would make this game a little bit easier to play though is some sort of map system. There is a kind of map in the instructions but due to the fact that all the levels are completely randomly generated every time you play it was impossible for them to show the full layout but I feel like it could have done with some sort of map that fills out as you're going along because quite often I found myself going back to a previous room and because everything looked kind of similar I wasn't entirely sure whether I'd already explored there or not. Another weird thing that you might have just noticed there in the instruction manual is the fact that the jump and action buttons are reversed to what you would usually expect from a Game Boy platformer. This actually took a long time for me to wrap my head around and I don't quite understand why they put jump on B 
and action on A that just doesn't make any sense to me. Like I briefly mentioned before as well, the fact that killing the ghosts or collecting the gems doesn't really do anything feels like kind of a missed opportunity. It would be great if there was some sort of score at the end or some reason to collect the gems to unlock a new area. It seemed like the game glitched on me several times as well. For some reason, sometimes when I hit the ghosts they would kill me and other times they would just make the screen shake and have no other consequences. Also, I actually played all the way through this game several times and sometimes when I reached the mid section, not all of the boulders would fall down and trap me so it looked like I could go back when really it was supposed to show that the entire screen was full of them so I'm not sure what happened there. Things that I do like though, I love the simple story and I love the way it wraps up at the end. I'm not going to show it in this video of course for spoiler reasons, but I definitely recommend you going and playing this game for yourselves. I did have a lot of fun with it and it's actually completely free to play if you have a look on the itch.io page. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. And if you want to buy a physical copy, I'll also put a link to his Etsy store so you can go and buy one that looks just like the one that I unboxed in this video. And I just had to try this out and see whether it worked or not. Considering this was the first Game Boy Studio game that I played that also contained colour, I was really interested to see whether it worked on the original Game Boy. Of course, it's a lot better if you've got a Game Boy Color or a modded system, but even if you don't, even if you've got one of the original Game Boys like the one here, it's still perfectly playable. I'm really glad that Game Boy Studio kept the ability to play these games on any Game Boy system. Overall, considering this is the first game that I've played in Game Boy Studio 2, I had a fantastic time with it, and playing all of these Game Boy Homebrew games and seeing all these amazing things that can be done with Game Boy Studio, it's really made me want to go and check out the software for myself. So maybe in the future, I'll do a video about my own game. I'll keep you all posted on that one. So there we go, I really hope you enjoyed that look at Ghostly Labyrinth. If you want to play the game for yourselves, I will put a link in the description below so you can go and check it out completely free. You can play it on the PC. You can even, and I was really amazed at this, you can even play it on your phone and it turns your phone into a Game Boy. Just have a look at this. How cool is that? So you can actually go and do that right now by clicking the link down below. And if you want to get yourself a physical copy, just like this one here, then I will also put a link to his Etsy in the description as well. That's it for this episode. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the game. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the episode and please go and check out Patreon if you want to show me some support. I've actually also started uploading a few completely exclusive videos over on Patreon, so definitely go and check them out. That's it though for this episode. I'll see you all next week for the next one. Goodbye.